Hi, I'm Louise at Spiral Bright Insight. This video is all about the solar eclipse in Aries, which is taking place on the 8th of April, possibly the 9th, depending on where you are in the world. And what I do with these videos is pull out some of the key astrology themes using traditional astrology and adding in a layer of fixed star galactic astrology just to sort of explore some of the cosmic energies that are working with us in these during these key astrological events now if you're new to my channel welcome it's really good to see you here and if you are returning and you've watched some of my content before welcome back i really appreciate the support and what is notable with this particular event is that there is a huge amount of content out there already. My YouTube feed is absolutely packed with videos about this solar eclipse. So it that sort of gives a nod to how significant it is and you know how many astrologers are sort of talking about it and looking at it. So if you are watching this, I really do appreciate it because you know, the, there's a lot of information out there, but I hope you will enjoy my perspective. So we have this solar eclipse, which is when the sun and the moon meet together at the same degree point in the chart. And with this eclipse, which is the second of a pair, we have the full moon eclipse in Libra on the 25th of March. This is a solar eclipse. It is a total solar eclipse and it is happening at 19 degrees 24 minutes of Aries, which is the very first sign in the zodiac. So solar eclipses are new moons, so we are always looking at a new start, the birth of something, the creation of something new, and because this is a north node eclipse with the north node in Aries, this is very much bringing our focus towards where it is we have to sort of grow towards to experience evolution at a soul level. So this eclipse is really encouraging us to take a step forward, to take a step certainly out of our comfort zone, to explore and to embrace something new that is really going to push us forward and push us to expand and to grow. So when we're working with Aries energy, it is very much the beginning of the zodiac. So there is very little sort of outside influence. If you think of Aries as where we come into the world, so we are fresh faced, everything is new, everything is pure potential. We haven't had sort of the opinions or influences of anything outside of ourselves when we're working with Aries. So Aries can at times sort of come across as quite selfish from that point of view because Aries isn't always taking into account the other. That is what Aries is here to work on. But this is about taking a step out onto a new path, being a pioneer, breaking new ground, treading new ground, being the leader as well, sort of showing the way, taking that step forward so that everybody can follow behind. And Aries is very much as well about a reset. So at the time of this eclipse, we are in, being invited to really press that reset button. We're having an opportunity to wipe the state clean and to start again from scratch. Now, eclipses are always quite dramatic events. We tend to have, they come in pairs, we tend to have at least two sets or two eclipse seasons in one astrological year. This is the first eclipse season of 2024. And eclipses serve to wake us up. They kind of come at us, they bring some unexpected new energies through with the purpose of really maybe throwing off, off us of course a little bit to wake us up or shake us out of our slumber if we've become stuck or fixated in a certain way of being but they are absolutely about a reset of some description and when there is an eclipse something is eclipsed 
with a solar eclipse, the moon comes in front of the sun and our light source is temporarily removed or extinguished. So this is a period of time when we have to step into the darkness. If you think of it um, like a seed being planted, the seed starts its life in the dark underground and you know it takes a lot of faith to be able to push up out into the world not really knowing what is out there so there is a point in this eclipse where the lights are going to go out and it's when the lights go out that we can see the shadow so this is really very much a time where we are being encouraged to look at things in a new light see things that we haven't necessarily seen before that we haven't wanted to look at before but in that darkness that point of stillness we are invited to come deep within the self and to really center ourselves in that stillness and to take a pause. But because we are working with Aries, Aries is cardinal fire. So there is always a light source. And with Aries, it is effectively the spark. It's the spark of creation. Something new is being lit up. It hasn't had time to grow to develop into anything yet but the spark is there the seed is there we have created something new and something is ready to bloom and we are being reminded as well that when the lights go out there is always hope and the imagery that I keep getting whenever I think about this particular event is the um, sculpture which is called expansion of the woman who is being cracked open and the light is flooding out through all those cracks. And that feels really, really significant because we have, as part of this eclipse, we have Chiron in absolute center stage. And again, whenever I look at the chart with this eclipse, Chiron is the asteroid that is standing out. Chiron is sitting packed, jam-packed in the middle of a whole bunch of planets and asteroids in in Aries. We have the Sun, the Moon and Chiron all at exactly the same degree point to the minute, 19 degrees 24 minutes of Aries. We have Mercury retrograde and Eris ahead of the Sun, Moon and Chiron and then sitting behind we have the North Node at 15 degrees of Aries, Venus and Hygieia. So that is a lot of Aries energy but Chiron is sitting right smack in the middle and this is very much to me a Chiron eclipse. Now Chiron is the wounded healer, the glyph of Chiron is the key and Chiron in Aries is really the wound of the self, the wound of the identity, the wound of having the right to exist, of feeling good enough of, or not feeling good enough. And when we have Chiron in Aries, which is a collective transit for us all at, the at this time, at this point in time, we often feel that as long uh, as well as not having the right to exist, we don't necessarily belong, we don't fit in. So this is quite a difficult wound to work with, but Chiron is always here in our chart to show us that it, it's actually the wound that is the key to the healing and it is the wound that creates the cracks so that the light can come out and what I keep seeing is that although we may be spend some time in the darkness and this can be sort of figuratively and metaphorically speaking although for some who are living within the eclipse pathway the light may dim for a time as the moon passes over the sun Although we have to spend this time in the dark, we are being encouraged to let, to, to see that actually the light can never go out because the light inside of us is always there. It is always switched on. But at times it's only through the wounds that create cracks that we can actually begin to see it and acknowledge it and recognize it and know truly that it's there. So the spark of light that is shining in the darkness, sort of showing us the way, is actually coming from within. And that felt like a really powerful message. 
So when we have Chiron in Aries, we can also feel very disconnected from ourselves, from our bodies. You know, we kind of often feel that we need to escape. We're looking for something outside of ourselves. But the gift is that the healing and the light is actually within us. And that is what we are encouraged to connect to and to see and to acknowledge and to then start to work with. It is often the wounds that we are bringing in with us or that we encounter through our lives that help us to sort of step into the healers that we are all meant to be. And it is the wounds and the trials and the trauma that we may experience that then allow us to help other people. So this is kind of, it feels like a really strong theme for this eclipse. Now, just looking at the chart overall, because obviously, although the sun and the moon are key at the time of eclipse, we always look at what else the other planets are doing in relation to the chart, just to give us a picture of the energies that we're working with. Now we have Mars, which is the ruling planet of this lunation, Mars being Aries ruler. And Mars, of course, is the god of war. So there is, if Mars in its lower expression can be quite aggressive, so there can be um, overtones or undertones of war, certainly anger coming to the surface to be healed with this um, ruling planet. But Mars is in Pisces at the moment at the and at the time of this eclipse. So Mars isn't particularly strong in this water sign, um, which, you know, Pisces wants to dissolve everything. Pisces wants to spread compassion everywhere and bring unity consciousness to the fore. So there is a real sense that if there is any aggression or anger, then it will be put out by the water. It will be cleansed. It will be soothed. It will be cleaned out very much, you know, with compassion, with love for all through the Pisces energy. And Mars is also in a conjunction with Saturn. So again, Saturn isn't particularly strong in Pisces, but Saturn is very much exploring the spiritual self and the spiritual side of life. And so as Mars comes around to meet Saturn, there's going to be a real sort of boost, a real quest to explore our spiritual selves, to connect with our higher selves, to connect with something outside of ourselves to help us bring us back to ourselves. So this is very much about hearing the message that it is through mastering our spiritual side and the spiritual aspects of ourselves that we can come back to wholeness and come back to healing. And that is such a big part of this eclipse. Now we also have Mercury has stationed retrograde in Aries and um, it's happening the same day that I record this video. And when we have a Mercury retrograde, it is a time to really come in within and to review to see what perhaps you weren't able to see before, to see information in a new light. And because Mercury is moving back through the sign of Aries, this is very much about sort of reconnecting to the self in a new way, in perhaps a way that we haven't done before. This is about potentially having access to new information about ourselves that again wasn't available before or we just couldn't see that might have been hidden we might have missed it the first time around but we have this opportunity to review to redo to reconsider and because mercury is our mind it is our understanding it is our um our sort of our consciousness it's it is possible that we are going to have during this period a real reprogramming in how we see ourselves and how we understand ourselves and who we are and the role that we play in the world. And this can help us reconnect to what it is that makes us unique, what our gifts are. Obviously, Chiron, you know, is almost cracking us open so that we can connect to that light inside, which is the greatest gift. And it is our light that will help to heal not only ourselves, but everybody around us. Now, Eris who is the planet of chaos and discord. Eris is very much the divine feminine warrior. She has a loud war cry. She wants to stand up for anybody who has experienced injustice or who has been repressed or marginalized. 
and Eris is in a conjunction to Mercury. So Mercury is giving Eris a voice. And so again, you know, this is information potentially that might be shouted out through the Eris energy, but she wants to really call out corruption. She wants to stand up for the underdog. She wants to tell the truth and she has Mercury alongside her, helping her, supporting her to do this. So there could be some chaos with this Eris energy through, you know, through this eclipse. And what I didn't say before was, although this obviously happens, it is a moment in time. And I believe that the eclipse in the States is actually going to last for four minutes. The influence and the energies of this eclipse will stay with us for the next six months until we get to the next eclipse season later in the year. So, you know, this is not just a kind of an instant sort of one day event. This is going to really reset our path for, you know, the time of a great, of considerable time to come. Now we have Jupiter approaching its conjunction with Uranus. So again, this energy is building. I think they're three degrees apart at the time of the eclipse. Uranus representing our higher mind, representing our awakening. Jupiter expanding anything that it comes into contact with. Jupiter representing our beliefs, our ability to see the bigger picture, to push beyond where we think is possible. And when these two planets come together, when these two energies blend and merge together, you know, yes, there is likely to be disruption to where we thought, you know, we were comfortable because Uranus wants to shake us out, is absolutely, you know, happy to cause chaos, to disruption and absolutely the unexpected. Um, but, you know, this is just a, another big part, another big step in the process of waking us up, of helping us to see the bigger picture, to see truths that have been hidden, that have been repressed possibly by ourselves, but also by, you know, externally. And, you know, we may come certainly by the end of April, my feeling is that we're going to have a very different view of our world. And certainly with this eclipse and the strong Aries energy, how we fit in and our role that we play as individuals and collectively within it, within as part of it. Now we've got Neptune sort of nearing the end of Pisces. It's still at 28 degrees, but Neptune in Pisces is creating a huge amount of illusion, of confusion. It's still very difficult to know what is true and what is not. You know, so the key there is to come back into the body and to really trust your body and use your discernment wherever you can. Don't necessarily trust what you are being shown is the kind of message there. But Neptune and Pisces is also giving us this huge boost to our spirituality. It's asking us to be more compassionate, to step away from the polarity and duality and step more into unity consciousness. And also, um, you know, to trust in the unseen. So to trust in our higher selves and to connect to our higher selves much more. Now, Venus at the early degrees of Aries, of Aries is creating a sextile to Pluto. So you know, again, Pluto wants to transform, wants to dig deep and expose what has been hidden. And with Venus in Aries, this is about relationships, but it is much more about the relationship that we have with ourselves. Venus wants us to see the value of who we are. Venus wants to promote our self-worth and our self-esteem and you know, really transform how we consider ourselves and how we view ourselves within the bigger picture as part of the collective with Pluto and Aquarius sort of in the game here within this aspect. And sextiles are, homo are harmonious, but they do take some effort. So it isn't necessarily something that is just going to flow. We do have to work with it slightly, but the results will be absolutely worth it. And then if we just look at some of the galactic stars and points that are in the chart that are working with us at this eclipse. And um, if you are interested in fixed star astrology and you haven't done so already, I would recommend that you go to galacticastrochart.com, which is a brilliant website with a free astro fixed star calculator. And you can put in your details, your birth details, and you can pull up your fixed star birth chart. Um, it's not always apparent um, if you haven't studied fixed stars what exactly that means. So I'm more than happy to you know, help you decipher that. 
um, if you wanted to book a reading, but it also shows if you put in the dates for specific events like the solar eclipse, you can see which fixed star energies are working with the planets in the chart to support these, um, these individual and powerful events. So we have the sun and the moon and Chiron are all conjunct a fixed star called Tau Ceti in the Cetus constellation. Now, Tau Ceti is very close to us in terms of light years. It is said to be very similar to our planet. Um, but Tau Ceti has, if we're looking at it from a star seed perspective, a history of trauma. The planet was um, in harmony and you know, in the fifth dimension, but there has been in its past much many wars and trauma and attacks and and ultimately destruction so the Tau Setians were forced to leave their planet and they are said to be residing on spaceships at this time so there's a real theme here if we sort of look at the the metaphors and the themes that are coming through with this conjunction of being homeless of not being rooted of not um having a home not necessarily no nowhere to belong to and also displacement along with destruction and trauma so again you know a lot of us have this galactic lineage these galactic memories within us that are coming up at this time to be healed and it's not just how seti there are many stars in the universe who've experienced this particular or something similar so a lot of us are bringing through these memories to be healed and we also have with Tau Ceti and Cetus this um, sort of symbolism of the whale because Cetus is the whale constellation so the whale being a creature who is very majestic very powerful um, and obviously lives in the depths of the ocean so there is this theme of going down deep within to connect to the depth of our emotional our emotional depth to really um, experience huge transition transformation and if we think of you know the bible story of jonah and the whale jonah spent three days and three nights in the belly of the whale in total darkness cut off and isolated from everything that he knew he had to trust he had to have faith that that there was something more at that time and he went through a complete metamorphosis and transformation during that time and when he came out of the whale he was completely transformed so again you know with this fixed star playing such um, a significant and influential role in this eclipse just by nature of where it is in relation in relation to the sun moon and chiron you know there is this real sort of sense that we are experiencing a rite of passage and again there's that theme of going into the dark of being cut off from everything so that we can experience a reset so we can experience that transformation that rebirth and so that we can start to recognize that the light that never goes out isn't actually something outside of ourselves um, but it is actually coming from within. So we also have Mercury and Eris in a tight opposition to Arcturus and Speaker or Spiker. And actually the Sun, the Moon and Chiron are in a wider opposition to these stars as well. Now, these two stars will always show up or mostly show up together as they share the same degree point. Um, and but they have slightly different sort of energies that come with them and Arcturus is very much about emotional healing we work with Arcturus or Arcturus works with us during times of transition it's said that all souls move through the Arcturus stargate um, on entry and exit from earth so this is very much about healing of helping us to shift as we go through this sort of and again there's this feeling of rite of passage a journey which is very much linked into Aries to sort of the pioneer to stepping out into new ground into new earth and um, also with Spica which again is slightly different there's a more feminine energy coming through Spica this is believed to be a planet where there is peace harmony and much serenity 
there's a real focus on being rather than doing so um you know we would have had lifetimes in spike to really recharge to have that downtime just to exist and to be which again is very much sort of the aries i am energy and spike also helps us to uncover our gifts so again because this is an opposition you know the gifts are at the moment, we might think that they're actually outside of ourselves, but with this Chiron energy, with the eclipse, it's very much about coming within and realizing and recognizing that the gifts are actually inside us. They may be hidden, they may be sort of locked away, but this is an opportunity to unlock them and to be able to see them and recognize them. And as part of that, you know, we have to recognize that we all bring unique gifts and it is that by being authentic and really recognizing what makes us special and individual and unique that we can finally recognize our gifts and then start to use them so the north node is in a conjunction with alpha rats in the andromedan constellation and in this is um part of it's a different galaxy, it's part of our universe, which is very separate from our Milky Way, although it neighbours. However, the energies coming through from our frats are all about transformation, but ultimately about freedom. And this is where the North Node wants to take us. It wants us to really acknowledge our, our right to be free, to explore um, the potential, to see what happens when we really start to transform. And the Alphrat's energy is requiring us to be adaptable, to be able to shape shift, to merge, to not become stuck and fixed, but to sort of just, you know, take anything that comes at us as something that is required rather than going into fear to see the potential and the opportunity and the adventure but um, ultimately, you know, using that higher wisdom to really um, embrace the potential of the freedom of who we are within the bigger picture. And one, there's two more that I want to bring into this video. Eridanus, so Arcana in the Eridanus constellation, which is the river constellation, is in a conjunction to Saturn and Mars. Now, this, um, this river metaphor is obviously, you know, working with the Pisces energy, the water, the cleansing, but the river needs to flow and the river needs um, the land and nature to guide it because it is the land and the nature and it is the land that dictates the path of the river. So again, for me, it feels like this is reminding us that although, you know, um, it is really important, again, to embrace our spiritual side and our spiritual gifts at this time, and this is what Saturn and Mars are really calling for us to do. There is also with this Arcana Eridanus um, connection, asking us to be mindful and to be really aware of the importance of nature at this time to really help to guide us um, in the direction that it is that we need to go. And um, Arcana is also very closely associated with the elven, the elemental energy. So there is real magic here. Again, transformation, power, strength, speed. And again, sort of this remembrance that we are on a spiritual quest. We may feel, you know, in the 3D world that we are just human beings, that we're physical, that we're flesh and blood, but there is so much more to us when we're actually able to connect with that. And there is a beautiful symbolism that one of my um, galactic astrologer sort of colleagues and friends talked about, Taylor Norris, about this image of the Lord of the Rings where the elves um, give the um, give Frodo the this light to use in the times of greatest darkness and again you know it's like we may think that this light is coming from outside of ourselves but actually when it becomes completely dark the light is within and that is what we are seeking that's what we're trying to find within ourselves now we also have, um, with the North Node in particular, but again, because the Sun, the Moon and Chiron are very close to the North Node, we have a, a Cardinal Grand Cross. 
and that is with Vega in the Lyra constellation, Sirius A and Canopus in the Carina constellation, who are both in the sign of Cancer. And this is really bringing us, bringing us through some really interesting themes. It is showing, because Vega and Sirius A in particular are very linked to our human galactic history, and many of us have had previous lifetimes in these star systems. So it is showing the importance of us embracing and connecting to and recognising our galactic history, which may actually form part of the new way of seeing ourselves, the new way of understanding. Obviously, if you're watching a video like this, you probably already have an understanding um, or an idea or an inkling that this is likely to become more widespread, more mainstream as we move through the year and we start to realise you know, what it is that we are truly or who we are truly. Um, but it also it is reminding that it is through working through the wounds of our galactic past lives that we can come into full healing and full wholeness but this there is an interesting star which again is quite new to me called canopus now canopus is the boat it is the keel of the boat and the imagery or the energy that comes through with this star in particular is about being on a journey and again that ties into the river with the mars and saturn connection in pisces at this time but it is very much about being on a journey, pushing forward. And Canopus is one of the brightest stars after Sirius in our skies, showing the way, leading the way, guiding the way, acting as a lighthouse in the dark to guide us through the stormy seas and to bring us to safety. And with the star, there is also a focus of transforming and transmuting evil into good. So it is moving from dark to light. So again, these sort of themes fit in really, really well with the overall theme of this eclipse. So there is a lot more I could say in terms of, sort of the general astrological chart and also the fixed star chart, you know, but I don't want to make this video too long. So just to kind of recap, we are in a time of huge change. I think anybody watching videos and content like this is more than aware of it. But this is very much an opportunity to press the reset button for all of us and to kind of set us onto a new course to take us out into, you know, a path and land and terrain, an environment that perhaps we haven't sort of been before. Or we don't know, we don't recognise, but it is having the courage through the Aries energy to take that leap of faith and to trust that actually when we do, you know, we take that first step, then another and another, and the path will unfold in front of us. Um, we're also really being called to sit with ourselves and to really connect with who we are truly. You know, when we take away all the sort of external influence, the programming, the conditioning, the control, um, all the information that perhaps hasn't necessarily been true, when we strip all that away, we're being asked to really connect with who we are and to remember the parts of us that we have forgotten or locked away or have, have had hidden from us. So there's very much a new understanding coming through, and that is part of our growth through the North Node. Um, you know, and it could potentially, because of the presence of Chiron at this time, it could trigger a healing crisis. But if it does, you know, it could trigger with Uranus and, and, and Jupiter being so strong, you know, it, could trigger chaos and um, upheaval but again we have to trust that that is part of the process and that you know sometimes or almost every time the wound is the key to our deepest healing and you know I think again with the Aries being so strong it is all about being true to yourself because that is the key to the growth it is standing in your authenticity be having integrity and just coming back to who we are and how amazing we are and remembering how amazing we are and the power that we hold within us. So I have this feeling that when the lights do come back on after this eclipse, you know, things could feel very different. And it might not be immediately obvious because, as I said earlier, these things can take 
six up to six months to unfold but the shift will have happened and the energy is there to support us so if you've got this far thank you so much for watching i'm going to put a copy of the chart at the end of this video just so that you can see what it looks like um if you're a visual person and if you want to know more about my work please go to my website spiralbright.co.uk i do offer readings i help to decipher your galactic chart i work with soul astrology as well and i have a monthly newsletter which i send out so you, if you like to know more about sort of from a monthly perspective what's happening in the skies and my interpretation of it then you can sign up for my mailing list but thank you so much for being here i am truly grateful and i shall see you soon